Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, back to you with a new video on the channel. And today's video is the second episode of the TechX Thrift Finding series with the Nintendo Wii that I bought. If you guys didn't see the episode where I actually go over everything on the Wii, um, episode one is... I don't know how to do the little like top right corner thing that you click and you can see a video that I link. I'll figure it out later. If I don't figure it out, just search it on my channel if you really want to watch it or it'll probably be in the recommended. Anyway, <laughs> you would think after being on YouTube since 2008, this is my second account for those of you who go check my about section on my channel and call me a liar. This is my second channel. You would think I would know how to use the website by now, but today's guide is all about jailbreaking a Nintendo Wii. But I want to start off with a story. So, as you guys would have seen in the previous episode, something that I've never purchased before came with this Wii, or never even seen in person before. It came with one of the official Nintendo Wii SD cards. And we figured out last time, you know, I actually got kind of a steal of a deal paying only $37.61 for the Nintendo Wii when it actually realistically equaled out to being about a $96 package overall. And I can probably make it even more if I clean this thing up physically, which I do plan on doing in the future. So, well, that SD card. I threw it in my laptop. And there were other folders on it. And... I'm sure you can see where this is going. There were other folders on it. There was a folder for some uh, Nintendo DS uh, home, or not homebrew, Nintendo DS, uh, like DS shop games. There was 3DS stuff. There was a DCIM folder. DCIM is your standard uh, camera folder where pictures get saved. There were some pictures, man. There were some pictures. I deleted that stuff right quick. Out of all the computers I've ever bought that had people's data on it from thrift stores, I never thought for a second the first time I would see stuff like that is from a Nintendo Wii SD card. Now, let's get back into the fun little video about hacking a Nintendo Wii. So, anyway... The first thing you want to ask yourself is how do you want to use your Nintendo Wii? I have so many Nintendo Wiis. I have a ton of them simply because I generally find them this cheap and it's worth it for me to grab them because then I can clean them up and I can flip them if I just jailbreak them real quick and then I send them on their way. So this Nintendo Wii specifically I'm going to keep and I have another Nintendo Wii that I'm going to make a separate video on for how to convert it into a Linux box. And you can actually use it from there to be a really basic Apache server, which is actually really useful, especially since you can connect a external hard drive to it and they'll actually see it via USB. It's very slow. And you can do it better with a router and DDWRT, but that's also a subject for another day. Let's get back to the Nintendo Wii. So we're going to throw a homebrew channel on it. We're going to throw my menu of on it. I have a whole list of basically what it is. So we're going to do my menu of USB loader GX, save game editor. I'm going to show you how to install some WADs, some of the iOS patching, and how to apply a custom theme to your launcher. So this might be a longer video. This might be about 35, 45 minutes. So sit back, get yourself a drink of some kind, maybe some popcorn. And let's just have some fun. I wanted to do this on a live stream. But I also wanted to make these videos all in one day, which is why you can see it is now 1249 at night. I should be going to bed. Actually, I'm going to turn off my light real quick. Now this recording session feels better. So let's get right back into it. If you guys want me to upload this SD card, the letter bomb exploit isn't going to work for you because, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So I can't necessarily upload the letter bomb part of it, but I can make this so all you need to do is the letter bomb part and then you're good to go. So first of all, what can you do with homebrew? You can do, you can play patch disc games, you can, uh, which basically lets you uh, mod games on the Nintendo Wii. Like I said, you can my menuify, you can use USB loaders. This one, in my opinion, is easier to use. 
So we're going to install that one. You can do clean rip and stuff like that, which lets you rip games from your uh, directly from the CD. The Save Game Manager, Homebrew Browser, We Connect 24, and WFC services. So you can actually connect to a third party Nintendo server now. Uh, there's the backup system with BootMe, there's Preloader, and there's WeMC to turn it into a media player, which I don't normally do. But we're going to do the letter bomb exploit because I feel like that's my favorite exploit for the Nintendo Wii. So I'm going to get the Wii turned on and ready to go. I'm still using this gross Nintendo Wii Wiimote. I really should have just grabbed my other Wiimote, but whatever. So let's go. So first of all, you need to decide which exploit you're using. Now, obviously for me, like I said, I'm going to use Letter Bomb. There are other exploits. There's Flash Hacks, there's Blue Bomb, there's String to Hacks, um, which need a server connection. This is Blue Bomb. If you have a Wii Mini, Blue Bomb is the only exploit for the Wii Mini. I have never had a Wii Mini. I would like to get one simply so I can make a video on how to do the Blue Bomb exploit. But I've never had one, so I can't make that video. If somebody out there has a Nintendo Wii Mini and they're willing to either send it to me and I'll send it back to you with it jailbroken, I'm willing to do that for you. So anyway, we're going Letter Bomb, so I'm going to click Letter Bomb. Now, Letter Bomb exploits the actual mail system on the Nintendo Wii. So you basically go in, you select the red little letter that instantly uh, exploits your Nintendo Wii, basically, and you're good to go. So as you can see, you need an SD card. Basically, up to 32 gigs works on the Nintendo Wii. You cannot go bigger, and you need to make sure you're on System Menu 4.3. I have never seen a Nintendo Wii on anything older than that. I would like to get one for collectible purposes, especially something on something really old. And I feel like there's a way to downgrade once you're uh, letter bombing the system, but I'm not really worried about that. So as you can see, you need to then go in, you need to get your console information with the MAC address, and then you have to go to the website, please hack me, put in the MAC address, select your system version, and click I'm not a robot, and then click a wire and it downloads and puts the put this content on the SD card and then throw it in your console. So now that we're all cut up to speed, let's go in and jailbreak my console. So as you can see, I'm all set up. Where's my little finger? There it is. So you go to the little, little letter on the screen, kind of scroll through a couple days until you see the letter pop up. Simply click it, instantly boots into um, some exploitive mumbo jumbo. <laughs> um, obviously, software must not be sold neither alone nor as part of a bundle. I might ignore that because I'm gonna throw a Nintendo. I'm gonna throw a couple of my spare Nintendo Wii's on eBay anyway. Let me go past it, please. Come on, it takes a second the first time. Honestly, if you're buying it as part of a bundle, not everybody has the ability to do this kind of thing. So I don't personally see a problem with buying a Nintendo Wii that somebody else jailbroke for you especially off of eBay or something like that. So as you can see, we are now in the hack me installer. You want to click continue and we're going to install boot. Me. We're going to install the homebrew channel, which by the way, the steps for that continue with homebrew channel and boot me installation. Very simple. Simply go through, hit the one on the controller, install homebrew channel, continue. And then from there you want to install boot me and continue. And then this is how your SD card basically is set up. And you're good to go. So we're going to go back in and I'm going to do the homebrew install. Just continue. I know this is ugly. I'm sorry. The best display input I have is a simple USB. I'm sorry. It's terrible. But we're going to do boot me. Install. Yes. Yes. And it's installed. So now we can return to the main menu. Exit. So we're all good there. So the next step is continuing with a NAND backup if we want to make one. 
I'm going to skip over this because I don't usually do it. I don't waste the storage space. It's a Nintendo Wii. It's whatever. Although you probably should do it and maybe I'll do it for the video purposes. So you want to open the homebrew channel and press the home button. I've actually never done this, so let's do it together. So we're actually in here. Hit the home button. Go to launch boot me. And then you need to back up your NAND. Which... Let's see. Uh, we need the gears icon. Why won't it scroll? Oh, that's why. My Wiimote turned off. I guess we're not doing this. That's okay. Well, that's interesting. Give me one second. I figured it out. I totally forgot you have to do it with the, you can do it with the power button on your Wii if your Wiimote for some odd reason won't do it, or plug in a Nintendo uh, GameCube controller and you can scroll through this. I just forget what button you hit for selection. Nope, that's my disc. Wii Sports, go back in. There we go. So you use the reset button below the power button. Power button to scroll, reset to select. So now we're going to back up the NAND, which you only need about half a gig for, but this does take a while. So I'm going to pause this until it comes back. I decided to cancel the backup. It was taking too long. Anyway. So the next step in the process here is we are basically going to install Preloader. So Preloader, I forget what this actually is. Preloader adds a level of brick protection to your Nintendo Wii. It loads before the Wii menu does, hence the name. The tool can also enable hacks on your Wii menu and can be used to quickly launch the homebrew channel, boot me, or whatever other homebrew items. So very simple, you download the preloader installer. From there, just put it on your SD card in the apps folder, and then you have to go in with Homebrew Channel and install it. Very simple. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna install it. Been a while since I've installed it actually, so this should be fun. You can use the arrows in here to actually scroll through, which is really nice. We're gonna go to preloader installer, load, loads very quickly, which is nice. Please wait while we initiate. Uh, press A and plus to install. A and plus. Moving the system app, doing everything, patching. So everything's done. Press A to exit the loader. Exiting. Simple. Done. So now we're protected from any kind of bricking of the console. So if you want to actually enter the preloader menu, you have to turn off your Wii and you have to hold reset and power at the same time. So hold reset while turning on your Nintendo Wii and you should get a little custom menu. So I'm going to do it real quick. It's been a while since I've done this, but that's okay. Oops, held it for too long. So you basically turn it on and just hold your reset button. And now we're in the system menu. So you can use this and you can scroll through with your, uh, with your stuff. You can do installed files. You can load a file, set a password, go through a whole bunch of settings. I'm not going to go through that in this video because it's kind of beyond the scope of it. I'm just going to go back to the homebrew channel. But that's there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can block disk updates, block online updates. Both are kind of useless now because the Nintendo Wii is not getting forced updates from Nintendo anymore. Auto press A at the health screen so it just completely bypasses it. Replace the health screen with a back menu, which is really cool. Move the disk channel. Um, you can patch all Nintendo Wii games to work with... Uh, uh, a third-party server thing. There's the 480p graphics fix. There's a remove no copy save file protection region free everything 
Um, re-enable re banner bomb, which is another exploit. There's uh, a whole bunch of stuff you can do in there. But next we're going to skip the do's and don'ts because I'm not talking about that in this video. And we are going to do the CIOS. So this is D2X CIOS. I'll show you the screen here. This Wiimote is disgusting. So we're on CIOS. This is basically installing patched uh, files of um, the actual OS uh, software on the Nintendo Wii. This allows you to do things like backup games and stuff like that a lot more easily. So there are three things you have to patch, and if you mess this up, you do have to start completely over, or you might even have bricked the system, which is why you want to do the NAND backup. Personally, it's very difficult to get a Nintendo Wii anymore on Wi-Fi. I've discovered that I actually have to purposely run an older router just to get um, my home, my Nintendo Wii to even connect to Wi-Fi because it does not work on newer routers for some reason. Even if it is 2.4 gigahertz, there's a lot of devices these just don't connect to anymore for some reason. So I have to run them off an older router and I just limit all this stuff and do a simple password. That's the best way to go about it in my opinion. So, but with that, normally D2X custom iOS installer will actually download the WAD files from the internet in order to patch these wet, uh, these sections of the Nintendo Wii. That's a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. You can simply just download the WAD files like it says here. So you want to download the iOS 57-64 v5918.wad, download this WAD file and download this WAD file and just put them on the root directory on your SD card and it will automatically see them and detect them and you can install them without having to be connected to the internet. Very simple to do. So we're going to go in and we are going to patch all these files real quick. So we need to go to the CIOS installer, load it, and I want to be able to see the web page here just so I can be safe. But as you can see, press any key to continue. And what we want to do is we want to match these screens basically. So we want to go up to uh, matching the uh, V10 beta 52 D2X V10 beta 52. So here we are V10 beta 52 D DX V10 beta 52. Uh, there's a little carrot on the side next to these things on the far left. So you know what you have selected. You want to select fifth block 56 and do 250 with the CIOS revision of 65535. And as you can see, it is downloaded with the USB. So we are all good to go and you just hit A twice to install. So it's installing. You don't have to select the specific block. It'll do it by itself based on the settings you selected. But now the next one we're gonna do is basically a different block. So we just gotta wait for the installing to finish it's almost done. It is kind of a slow process, but remember it's a very slow processor inside these things, so not surprising. I've always wanted to look into overclocking a Nintendo Wii. I've heard you can do it via software. Um, I don't know. So we want to go back, which is just hit the B button. Oh, that exited the whole CIOS. Oops. If you do that by accident, you can just reload it to go and do the next uh, file thing here. So hit any key, just hit A. And now as you can see, we are going to do the beta 52 here. We're gonna do 38 and 251, 6535. Beta 52, D2X V10, beta 52. Hit A twice, and it will install. Then there is, oh, I skipped one. Oops. Well, here I am doing a tutorial video and doing things out of order like normal. I skipped the first one, so not a big deal. I can still do it. It's not a huge deal. So after this is done installing, then we have to do 
V10 beta 52 D2X V10 beta 52 on base 57 slot 249 at 65535. So I want to go back. There we go. So we're on there. We need to do 57, 249, 6535. And it installs. I'm, I'm going to go through and double check that I did actually do all three since I seem to have skipped the first one. Um, and I'll be back when it's done to move on to the next step. I'm just going to double check that I did things right. So I don't reboot this thing and suddenly it's potentially a brick. All right, I'm doing the last one, but we are going to, I'm going to let you guys see my computer my computer screen. I hit the wrong button because I'm tired. And now we are going to move on to USB loader GX. Very easy. You want to make sure you have these iOS's patched just like I did here, you know, not even a couple seconds ago. And we'll move on to USB loader GX. Very simple to install. Simply drag and drop the app into your app folder. Make sure you have the CIOS installed. You will also need something like Wii Backup Manager which I highly recommend. It's way easier to use than you think. And you can just throw the stuff in there. That'll allow you to, uh, you can also, if you end up downloading games and you get them as NKit, you can use a specific program to convert them back to ISO and then convert them with Wii Backup Manager. That's probably the best way to go about things. Um, also, I recommend using a USB drive or a... Uh, a somewhat large external hard drive for all your games because you will fill up a flash drive fairly quickly. But we want to just simply install um, the uh, USB Loader GX and then pretty much we're done with modifying this and I'll show you how to do WAD files. So we're gonna switch back to the Wii real quick. And we're going to exit because we're done with custom iOS installer. And now all we need to do is just be loader GX, continue. I need yet another WAD manager. I for realized I forgot a WAD manager. Man. So right now it's loading the config files. There is no USB device actually in here. This is just reading the channels off of my Nintendo Wii, but this is basically how the backup manager works. So you just simply launch the backup manager from your uh, from homebrew browser every time you want to use it. And then from there you can just do all this. And there's not much else you need to do. That's all you need to really worry about. We're going to go back to the homebrew channel because I think I have something on here that can install WAD files, and I want to go over that with you guys, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, can I do it with... Oh, my menuify. We'll do this real quick. So there is a um, side of this that you need to do on the uh, computer to make the theme work for your system, but we're simply just gonna hit A. It reloads the iOS, it mounts everything. We're gonna hit A to mount the SD card. I know there's a custom file on my SD card. Huh, oh well, not a big deal. We're just gonna go back. I need a way to do WAD files. I just realized I forgot that step. I think I can do it through Homebrew Channel. I've done it before without a WAD manager, but maybe I didn't realize I had a WAD manager. I just don't have a way to plug the SD card into my desktop. So, 
Yeah. Um, give me one second. I'm going to see if I have something on here that can install them. All right. I ended up downloading WeMod Lite. So if we go over, you can see WeMod Lite. This allows you to install WAD files, um, iOS files, which I know obviously iOS. There is a ladybug in my room and it just tried to fly in my mouth. Anyway, so you can install iOSs, you can install WAD, uh, WAD files, there's app loaders, change the iOS, change title managers and things like that. We are interested in WAD manager. So WAD files, SD card slot. I have a whole folder right here called WADs. As you can see, it's a whole bunch of virtual console games, but you can also get a lot of other stuff too. So this is all I ended up putting on here. This is a modded Mario Kart. It sucks, I don't recommend it. Um, but like I can put the Legend of Console from the NES on here. I can do Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time Virtual Console, Smash Bros. Um, there's Zelda 2 right here. I had a whole bunch of others um, and I used to even know how to make custom WAD files, but I cannot find the tutorial to save my life and I know I don't have the files to do it anymore. But we are going to do, we'll do a, sh a really small one for the video here because we're at 26 minutes and I know this is long. So as you can see, it asks, do you want to install it, uninstall it? Very simple, just hit the A button, install it. It'll install the contents of the WAD file as a virtual console icon on the um, little... Uh, on your home screen, we'll do the Super Mario Bros. 3, I guess. I love Mario Bros. 3. And once this is done, I'll show you guys the games running on here, and we'll be good to go. Also, anybody has a recommendation for a better video capture? Let me know. I hate this thing. This USB thing is terrible. I was hoping it would be a little better, but I've had it for a long time now, so I'm not really surprised. How do I go back to the home screen? System menu. Thank you. Thank you. So, as you will see here in a second, just let me skip. Thank you. As you can see, if I scroll over, where's my little hand? Thank you. There's Legend of Zelda here and Super Mario Brothers 3 mix, which I don't know what this is. I've never installed it, so we're going to check it out together here. Um, usually for NES games, it has you hold the Wiimote sideways. A and B is 1 and 2. Why does this look like Super Mario Brothers 2 United States Edition? I'm going to hit the plus sign for start. Plus sign for start. This is really confusing. Two is a. I am very confused. Is this a custom? Wow, this is a whole. Huh, I'm going to have to actually. Oh my God. What? Okay, this is cool. I'm going to have to actually play this. Can I go down this? Yo, what's that? Oh, a star coin. So instead of the endings being the way they were, this is confusing. So I can go down, run. Oh, it combines the first and second level. That's so cool. Holy crap. What happens if I touch that? Oh, nothing. Okay. Can I go? Can I do the little cheat? I wonder if it'll let me. Because I'm terrible at this level otherwise. Oh, I bet it will. The ladybug is on my arm. It does let you do it. <laughs> Please don't trap me at the end. I'm going to slow down since I've never played this before. Okay, so there's no way to run across. Got it. That's a really cool transition. The ladybug is now a 
attacking my computer screen. I just saw it. I don't know where it went. I don't think it's actually a ladybug. Wow, this is a really cool ROM. I've never played this. This is... Oh, I suck. This is really freaking cool. Oh my god, it lags. Holy crap, that lag. Just give me a freaking firefly. Thank you. That's all I wanted from myself. We definitely need to play this as a stream. This is sweet. Ooh, Vine. Let's see where that goes. And it scrolls the screen like Mario 2. This is really good. Honestly, this is a cool freaking ROM. If you're a fan of Mario and any of the NES games, grab this. This is sweet. Like, honestly, this is really freaking cool. Oh, wait, what do I do? Just fall back down? Oh, yeah, you just fall back down. So all the point of that was to get that coin. God bless America. Please don't, actually. I don't want you to. Okay. There we go. Wow, these f flowers come out of here quick. Anyway... Oh, you gotta jump from here. The bug is on my leg. Never played this level before. It doesn't even look familiar. What level is this a mix of? God damn it. This is really freaking cool. I've never seen this ROM before. It wants me to go this way. Oh, there's gonna be a bunch of fish, aren't there? Thank you. We're just going to book it. That's the best way to get through the fish levels is just book it. Ooh. Ooh. Please don't kill me. Nice. After this level, I'll end off the video. I hope you get... Or when I die. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's the basics of modding a Nintendo Wii. Um, other than that, I'm not going to show you how to do pirated games because Nintendo really frowns upon that and they will uh, copyright strike YouTube channels for that. And I don't want to do that. So I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video up to this point, showing how to homebrew, how to install a WAD file, how to completely letter bomb your Nintendo Wii. From here, the only thing left for me to really want to personally do to this Wii is just clean up the body of it with some isopropyl alcohol, clean it up. Probably take it apart, redo the thermal paste, clean out any of the dust and debris. Um, and then I'll set this up as my main Nintendo Wii downstairs. Or I'll keep it in this room and we'll do live streams off of it playing video games. Once I get a better capture card to do this crap, give me recommendations, please. I don't know what to look for. Other than that, if you guys enjoyed this video, like I said, the next... Uh, options that i can go over are another video game console or a vintage electronic for the thrifting series um if you want me to try to do a video of actually cleaning up the nintendo wii i can try i still need to get an actual desk to work at i have a desk it doesn't fit up my stairs and if i take it apart it's never going to go back together because it's one of those cheap office max desks but if I can get a table or an actual nice desk and just a rubber mat to work on, I am more than willing to do actual videos for you guys of uh, like hardware cleanups and um, refurbing electronics and modding consoles. So let's talk about it. Let's figure things out. If somebody's in the Northeast Ohio area and wants to help out, I'm not going to give you my address. That's stupid. But... Let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.